Should the Green Bay Packers re-sign Aaron? He was our entire offense in 2019, and maybe now he'll finally get the reps that he deserves, and if we don't re-sign him, I'll go into a crippling depression. Jones. Crossy Posse Packer Nation! Welcome to an episode of Packcast, the podcast where we don't be a Packers fan, but it sure does help. I'm your host, Tom. Yeah, you're damn right. I'm already looking at 2021. Crossy. And today, we are going to expand on the video that we talked about this past week, looking ahead and not this year's unrestricted free agents because we already did that but next year's because that could impact the amount of cap space that we're going to have this year if we're looking to get a deal done before next season but before we get to that i want to point to the merch people the merch a bunch of you have already purchased your wonderful pack cast toaster sweatshirts long sleeve tees jerseys and of course flavored condoms so check over bonfire.com slash store slash podcast for yours today so we're looking at the unrestricted free agents for 2021 and of course we're going to start with aaron freaking fracking jones now i want to start this off with i love aaron jones i love him i love him for the locker room I love the fact that the guy is a receiver. I love the fact that the guy can barrel over people. I love that he waved a bye-bye to the Dallas Cowboys as he ran past him into the end zone. I love all of these things, and I would love to keep him. But let's take a look at what's going on. So before this season, so the 2020 season, the guy's been making less than a million dollars a year. Give the guy some money. And in 2020, at just 26 years old, he'll be making $2.1 million. So he'll finally start to be going up there on the last year of his rookie contract. And obviously, if you've been following the career of Aaron Jones, he he was always that guy who were like, oh man, that potential is there. If only we could play him in that we had something for him, some kind of scheme, or he wasn't injured. And so for the first two years of his uh, career, he played in 12 games uh, both years. He started four games in 2017 uh, and eight games in 2018. In 2017, at 81 rushes for 448 yards and four touchdowns, nine receptions for 22 yards. Then he doubled up on that in 2018, rushing 133 attempts for 728 yards, eight touchdowns, and 26 receptions for 206 yards and one TD through the air. And then 2019, oh boy, oh boy, Matt LeFleur was like, mm, we got something good over here. And he played all 16 games, rushed 236 times for over 1,000 yards, 16 touchdowns on the ground, people, 16, 49 receptions for 474 yards and three touchdowns. The guy scored 19 touchdowns this year. I'd say he's pretty good. Now, obviously, we utilized him more, uh, and so that's why the productivity was up there, especially during those games where Devontae Adams wasn't in, and also Jamal Williams was serving as a nice number two back, and so you were able to preserve those wheels a little bit. Now, obviously, Jones is a little bit of an injury risk. He has sprained his knee three times, and, I mean, looking at it, I mean, Jones, if he does anything like he did last season, that man about to get paid. Right now, they're estimating that he's going to be about 11 to $12 million a year if the Packers do re-sign him. There are reports coming out that both the Packers and Aaron Jones are interested in, of course, renegotiating a new contract, and we're still going to have him for this year. But if you listen to the episode... Uh, that I did with Ken Ingles from last week. 2021 is a big year uh, when it comes to the amount of people we're going to have to re-sign. David Bakhtiari, Kenny Clark, Kevin King, (laughs) Corey Lindsley, and Jamal Williams are just a few of those names. And of course, Aaron Jones, who are scheduled to be unrestricted free agents. Now, obviously, we're trying to get Kenny Clark's deal done before this current season in 2020 starts because he's an integral part of that defense. But you look at some of the other big names, even if you don't want to do Kevin King, you have David Bakhtiari and Corey Lindsley, who are automatic starters. You're going to be giving them a third contract as they're getting into their 30s. And Jamal Williams has been a nice weapon as well. And plus, I love SpongeBob. Don't take him away from me. So the question becomes, okay, Aaron Jones is obviously an integral part of this offense, but do we have the cap space to re-sign him? Because you're looking at guys like Aaron Rodgers, for example. So in 2021, 
his, he's going to get paid $14.7 million per year. And then in 2022 and 2023, that goes up to 25 mil per year. And then you start talking about guys like Preston Smith, Zadarius Smith, Devontae Adams. All those salaries are adding up real, real quick. And so the question is, can we afford him? And are we going to have to potentially sacrifice re-signing some of these other guys for Aaron Jones? Now, you may be wondering, Tom, why wouldn't you re-sign Aaron Jones? He's a great player. Yes, I agree. The problem is, is he's a running back. And what that means is those guys, uh, every single time that a, you know, a big contract is signed to them after their rookie year, it usually doesn't work out pretty well, right? Look at Le'Veon Bell. Now with the Jets, that didn't really work out so well, at least for the first season, right? Not so good. Devontae Freeman didn't work out so well. Todd Gurley with his arthritic knee didn't work out so well. And you look at the past Super Bowl winners, none of them really have had an all-star running back. You look at Williams from this year, still on his rookie deal, not, you know, had uh, like a few hundred rushing yards. You look at all the times the Patriots won it, they got LeGarrette Blunt to come in at like the last second because they're like, here, buddy, here's a hot dog. You want to win a Super Bowl? And he's like, damn right. And even when the Eagles win it too, they're not having these big name players. So I think it's it's definitely a huge calculated risk because you have guys like, for example, like Ezekiel Elliott, who just signed a huge contract and they're also coming up to, they're going to have to re-sign Dak Prescott and they're going to have to re-sign Amari Cooper. So all that cap space that they have right now, pfft, that's going to collapse like a dying star real quick. And so, you know, when it comes to the running back position, you know, we, we don't have a whole lot right now. And so, like, we have Dexter Williams. We don't know what we have in Dexter Williams. We also have guys like Tyler Irvin. So, I mean, that's something. But you look at Jamal Williams, maybe we're able to keep him for a relatively cheap contract. But Aaron Jones, man, he's about to get paid. He's doubled the amount of touchdowns on the ground from year to year. It went from 4 to 8 to 16. If the guy scores 32 touchdowns next year, we're in trouble. But I'll be able to celebrate. So that's a good thing. So, I mean, if, if, I, if I were in control of this, which thank God I'm not because I would not make the right decisions. I mean, when it comes to guys like David Bakhtiari or Corey Lindsley, I, I, I think you, you prioritize them. Definitely Kenny Clark over Aaron Jones. And I'm saying this as a huge Aaron Jones fan. It's just because running backs, I'm not going to say they're a dime a dozen, but... I think just the risk is just too much. You're going to be signing this guy for, what, another four years? He'll be 30 years old when he's done, and you'll be paying him about $12 million a year? That's a lot of cap space that you're going to be eating into. Not only are you going to have to pay all those other guys that we've already talked about, those big names, but it's going to limit what we're going to be able to do in future free agencies. It's going to limit what we're going to be doing for draft picks. It's going to limit what we're going to be able to do to constantly re-sign guys. So, um, yeah, right now for me, I'm going to wait and see for this year to see how Aaron Jones plays. I have to imagine he's going to play well again. Um, and then, I don't know, maybe he'll take a discount. He won't, and you shouldn't settle, Aaron. You shouldn't. I just don't know about paying two Aarons that amount of money. We should get some diversity in the names here. Like, pay a guy named Joel. Maybe that'll help. God, our cap space is going to be bad. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. Are you like, Tom, stop looking at 2021. You're freaking us all out. Let's just go from year to year. And if that's the case, okay, now. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. You can always find me at TomGrossyComedy.com. We're at TomGrossyComedy on social media. See down below. Check out Backcast on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play Music, Spotify, and of course, YouTube. And a big shout out. Thank you to all the Patreon members. We're at Patreon.com slash TomGrossyComedy. But thank you so much for watching. I'm Tom freaking fracking Grossy. And as always... Go Pack Go!